From Opryland in Nashville, this is Ralph Emery with... Special guests this week from Austin, Texas, Sam and Son, the Geese and Slaw Brothers. And here's Del Rey. And here to open our show is Miss LaCosta. Where the moon is changing faces, they and I. Hey, would you join me in welcoming La Costa back to Pop Goes the Country? Oh, you're pretty. Woo! All right, I want to dispel one rumor about you. The rumor was that you, there is in the press, that you quit country music, gave it up. No and way. And moved to California. <laughs> no way, right? Huh? How'd that rumor get started? I just really don't know. I think somebody thought because I moved out to California that... When you make that move, you're just naturally going pop. I've been told that I have a, I could have that potential, but never would I leave country music because my roots are country. You're not going to leave us, are you? No. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Oh, I'll hold your <laughs> All hand. All right. <laughs> Mercy. I'm country. All right. <laughs> I want to introduce you folks to some old friends of mine, and I, I'm delighted to have them on the show, and I hope you enjoy them as much as I always have. They were on the Arthur Godfrey show for about 11 years, and 
I think they're extremely, extremely talented. And they are from the little town of Snook, Texas. Ladies and gentlemen, Sam and Son, the Giesenslaw Brothers. Me and my brother come to New York City. We was kind of quiet and shy. Seen this building on 34th Street, reached way up in the sky. We looked at each other with marble in our eyes and said, ain't that a sight? When a smooth-talking feller with some two-tone shoes come up to me and he said, yeah, would y'all like to buy it? And I said, you wouldn't put the chuck on us, would you, stranger? Don't take for granted that I'm dumb and stupid just cause I got a southern accent. Lots of people say y'all and talk with a drawl, including our president. The sign said, haberdashery store, so we went in one of those. Just in case you didn't know it, haberdashery store sales closed. They was having an overstock sale, the clerk whispered in my ear. And he said confidentially, buddy, just between you and me, these here double-breasted suits with your pleated britches and your white socks and your brown <laughs> shoes is going to be in this year. I said, you wouldn't put the shuck on me, would you, clerk? <laughs> Don't take for granted that I'm dumb and stupid just cause I got a southern accent. Lots of people say y'all and talk with a drawl, including our president. <laughs> Certainly is good to be back. Ralph Emery was inviting us over here at the TV as he lovingly referred to us as the Geese and Slaw Brothers from Snook. However, me and son moved over to Austin, you know, over where old Willie and Waylon and the boys is there, you know, by Luke and Bob. We figured to get a little more progressive. Son said he's tired of the, of the small town life of Snook there, you know. He was going to... We, we went over to Austin, and uh, son's all right. He was, when he was a little, little baby, our mother rocked him a lot, and she used them big rocks. <laughs> Caused the early paranoia about the boy, coupled with the fact she used to put his baby carriage in toy zones. Got to where, uh, well, we'd always get him to play hide-and-go-seek, and then nobody would look for him, you know. <laughs> Got all paranoid like that. He'd go to a football game now, and they huddle. He thinks they're talking about him. <laughs> we figured, figured get a little more progressive, moved over there to Austin. I'll tell you what. He was going to get him a suit to come for the thing, you know, to Nashville, and he went, went into the store. And uh, the guy said, I'll leave that right there for a minute, you see. Put the suit on, he says to old son, he said, I'll tell you what, that's just a fit now. He said, well, I don't know these sleeves over here. They's hitting him about there, you see. He said, them sleeves a little bit long. The clerk said, ain't nothing to it. You just pull them sleeves up to the length you want them, hold them right there at the elbow, you know. <laughs> said, well, it don't match this one now. He said, that's the same principle of it. You just pull her up about that high and hold her, you see. <laughs> he said, well, if them britches legs was fixed, It'd be better. He said, ain't nothing to it. You hike them up to right where you need them. Hold it with your elbow. He said, I guess the other leg is the same way. Yeah, it said that's the same. Hold it like that. He said, well, thanks a lot. So we paid for the suit, and we was just walking down the street there, you know, and met two old ladies, and one of them old ladies says to the other, Look at the shape that poor boy is in. <laughs> and the other one said, yeah, but don't his suit fit nice? <laughs> you know, that's the... <laughs> the oh. Well, now, I tell you, I told you it's a good line. But we was doing a little research on, uh, on people that might be considered to be a little bit touched, you know what I mean? We found out 25% of everybody in the United States a little bit off. One out of four, everybody in America. 
a little bit. You think it? You think it ain't a few crazy ones running around? You know? You ever see people forget who they are? You ever go and run them little toilet stalls and pay toilets, and somebody come banging on the door, and you say, "Somebody's in here." Stress. <laughs> and then you talking. You talking to your telephone, you know it's ringing, you saying, all right, I'll be there in a minute. <laughs> One out of four of everybody in America's little nuts. So you can go to somebody's house, you know, say, can they use your bathroom? Then you wash your hands and look around and say, oh, golly, all they got to dry your hands off with is the towels. You know, reach way on the back here and dry it a little bit. One out of four. If you don't believe them statistics, you should put yourself to this little test. Now you think of three of your closest friends. You're thinking of them. They three. All three seem all right to you. All the time. Because if they do, you the one. <laughs> but it was. Hell, <laughs> I tell you. <laughs> I might add that uh, Sammy and Son are just fantastic. <laughs> oh, sure. I appreciate your being on the show hey, very much. For now we're going to ease over to the romantic voice of our next guest, Del Reeves. Let's hear it for Del. <laughs> time to kill and I can tell my story about three times two dollars in the jude box one dime at a time two dollars in the jude box a dime at a time play the same old song about a love going on closing time two dollars ought to do me honey you buy the wine and I put it in the jude box one dime at a time, yeah, son. You got it, son. Pardon me, mister. I'm the visor down. Misery likes company, and I believe it, I found. Somebody just as lonely, I don't believe I'm wrong. If you had a place to go to, you'd have done been gone. And I've got More just in case that don't do the trick. I'll be dead broke tomorrow morning. Heartaches by the dozen. And a lady on my mind is driving me crazy. And a lady on my mind is driving me crazy. Since we do this program in the Grand Ole Opry House in Nashville, I thought it might be appropriate, Dell, if uh, we could meet Roy Acuff on this program. Would that be possible? Thank you. Bless your heart here. Welcome to our Grand Ole Opry. It's nice to be here on the Rap Emory Show. I believe this is the Rap Emory. Oh, what is this? Uh, it's wonderful just to sit here and be with you. <laughs> Answer this question, Dell. Would you do that in front of Roy Acuff? Uh, yes, because when I go on the stage of Grand Ole Opry, uh, if he's coming on and or what, vice versa, I'm going off. He said he'll either say, "Well, did you? Well, did you leave me some there, Dell?" <laughs> or he'll say, "Oh, I left you a little bit there that you can do with me tonight there, the great speckled birds." I don't, I don't believe we did that. <laughs> you know. So he he uh, he just laughs about it. Yes, he's just a lovely in person. I think. Uh, he thinks that uh, really and truly, I, which I think so, I think it's the greatest form of flattery in the world. It certainly is. To impersonate somebody. But Dell, right now we've got a pretty girl who is going to get into the picture. Oh, true. And here she is again, ladies and gentlemen, Miss La Costa. <laughs> Me and my brother 
Jesse and a rock called Walt Bell. Who was a god in the daytime and he knew his waters well. As the evening sun surrendered to a sleepy bayou night. Three afloat in a fishing boat and that's when we saw the light. I said it's a searchlight, but he didn't know. Jesse said it ain't one of ours, then his face came all aglow. It's glowing up the cypress trees and spreads and fill the night. Jesse stepped out of the boat, walked right for the light. Didn't come from above, didn't come from hell. Didn't come to hurt him, but it scared us just as well. Jesse walked from the boat on the bayou. the bayou drowning that's what the headlines ran what's all the stuff about a lot some smart report said many years have passed now since Jesse left that night they still ask about it but I never mention the lie but me and Walter we talk about how we went away and found its place like a newborn star somewhere in the Milky Way and it's glow lights up the heavens and it's flying across the sky. And the last 23rd verse in the Bible lets me know why. Must have come from heaven, didn't come from hell. Didn't come to hurt us, but it scared us just as well. Just a disappeared walking on the bayou. So I sang you to sleep After the loving With a song I just wrote yesterday And I hope you can hear What the words and the music Have to say It's so hard to explain Everything that I'm feeling Face to face I just watch trouble rise but I love you so much And the sound of your voice can get me high Thanks for taking me On a one-way trip to the sun Thanks for turning So real that it makes me want to cry. And I know that my song isn't saying anything. Oh, after the loving, I'm still in love. So I sing you to sleep.
What you're looking at is a very pretty picture of La Costa, and this is the cover of her recent album, which includes the song Jesse and the Light, which she performed on the show. And uh, Kaz, it's nice to have you with us. Thank you. It's good to be back. This is my second time, and it's, it's been fun, really. You, uh, I think Kaz is what your friends call you, right? Well, some of them. Costa or Kaz. You call me Kaz. That's all okay, right. Is that all right? All right. And, uh, from cause to cause over here. <laughs> oh, thank you. Franklin Delano Reeves. Thank you, sir. It's always a pleasure to come and visit with you, and especially to be with nice people like this. Now you've like got this cause. <laughs> cause I love you. Yeah. Oh, always now you've got to that. drive all the way back to Centerville. Oh, you? yes, yes. Down Highway 100. In the falls. Over here are my two special guests from Austin, <laughs> Texas. How special are they, Ralph? <laughs> <laughs> Mighty special. <laughs> Have you got a line for that? Oh, no, I was expecting you to come mm. up with one. Hey, thanks for inviting us. Now, this is to sound. bring the Austin sound up here in Nashville, eh, Dale? Did son have a good time? Son I said he had an outstanding time this evening. He was a bit worried. Two of his friends is in the gang getting married there in Austin, two boys. They married what? each other. <laughs> Well, well, you want to sing, Del? Del? Oh, oh. If I get the band, we'll, I'd love to sing it with these with these guys playing. Sing it. Sing it. Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. Oh, here we go. I'm ready now. I ain't gonna work on no railroad. I said I ain't gonna work on no farm. Gonna lay around the shack till my honey comes back. Roll in my sweet baby's arms. Roll in my sweet baby. Let's 